Hey, it's nice to see you again on the channel. Um, I recently taught a course where people were really interested in Redux um, and state management, and um, a lot of people were interested in finding out how Redux works. So I figured, why don't we just make a bare bones Redux from scratch to understand it, um, maybe connect it to some UI elements and go from there. And that's what we're going to do. So without further ado, let's just dive into the thing. So on the left, we have a browser window. On the right, we have Redux. In fact, I'm just going to open Redux here full screen. And what I want to do is um, first, we'll create a file called um, redux.test.ts. We'll do this TDD style, that is test-driven development. Um, and I'm just going to NPX the test to start running the tests. OK, well, the test failed because there's no tests. So to fix that, we'll import things like describe it and expect from the test. Um, and this is just standard unit testing procedure. Like if you're unit testing something, you describe the behavior, and you say it should do something and then you expect that it does something describe it um, and expect are just normal test primitives um this isn't a video about testing but if you want one let me know in the comments and i'll make one anyway moving on so um what, what do we want to do we want to describe um our redux and we want to say it should yeah should work it should um update state predictably let's maybe start there We'll do something here. Now, we need a Redux implementation to start with, but just to make our tests pass, okay, this is good. But we need um, an implementation. So we, how does Redux work? We need a function called create store. Let's just make that here. Create store. It returns a store, ideally. Um, so it returns a store that has these methods, get state, dispatch, and subscribe. This is kind of very bare bones, but that's kind of what we want. Okay. Um, does it take anything as an initial argument it does it takes the initial state um, which is a generic type so we'll say state and and also um, maybe action as generic as well or i don't know we'll see so we'll take the initial state state um, and an initial or a reducer let's say that uh, and a reducer is a function right that takes in the state which is state and an action of some type, which is, we could maybe do this, I'm not sure about the generic, and it returns the same state type, okay? And then we return get state dispatch subscribe. So our goal is to implement these three functions and then test them, and then we'll go from there, okay? So how do we get started? Well, first we need to clone the state. So we'll say let state be initial state, um, and then, sure, why not? Let's create this function. So now we don't need this. Boom. We're one third done. Dispatch. You dispatch an action. You dispatch an action that updates the, the state, the local state in, in, in this closure. Um, and then it doesn't do anything. Normally, dispatch just updates the state. It doesn't return anything. So let's try that. So um, we'll say you get an action here. So action, again, is type action. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll set the state. We call the reducer and we give it the state and the action and we call the function the reducer and we expect the reducer to return the new state that's what a reducer is supposed to do and then we set the internal state of our you know create store function aka our um bare bones redux uh to um the, the the result of the reducer function okay so this looks good i mean lastly subscribe but i think we have enough here to unit test so let's start unit testing this um let's maybe in, in our test, what we'll do is we'll say um, const uh, in, let's start with, yeah, sure. Initial state is count zero. Um, reducer is, wow, the state is the, the type of this. And the action is type string. We can maybe fix, make this a little bit more fun, right? So we'll do type um, actions is, wow. So we have two actions, increment and decrement. And so we'll say action is this instead. So we're creating a reducer, and we can switch on action.type. This should look like Redux if you know Redux, right? Um, case decrement, this looks good. Default, we just return the state. This looks great. Thank you, Copilot. Um, great, good. Now we have initial state and a reducer, so now we just need to call um, our function of create store. So const store is create store, uh, initial state and reducer. Okay, so now what we want to do is check that initial Check the initial state. Am I returning early? Why is this? Uh... Oh, we didn't close the function. Okay. So now we it looks good. We expect the initial state to be the initial state. And okay, the test passes. Great. Um, now what we want to do is dispatch an increment. And then we expect the state to equal what? 
Perfect. Um, uh, let's issue a decrement. Decrement here. Um, and we'll expect the state to be zero once again. This looks good so far. In fact, it's nice and type safe, so I can't do some nonsense like this. I can also add stuff. So since I have a big union type here, I can literally like have multiple actions. And, 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 I, and I love this, right? This is kind of the value of Redux um, is we can say, let's, let's have a new action called um, increment by. And payload is a number. We have decrement by as well. And so now we can just implement those. In fact, GitHub Copilot will do a nice job of helping us do this. And we decrement by as well. And now we can say, you know, just let's add one more dispatch uh, and we'll have this increment by. And check this out. It, it says, no, no, you need to tell me how much. So we'll add payload and say 1,000. We'd expect it to be 1,000. Okay, our tests are passing. Our reducer is working. Uh, so we have get state and dispatch already. Let's create subscribe. So how subscribe works is you give it as a as an argument, as a function to invoke every time the state changes, a subscriber as it were. Let's add that. So what we gotta do is have an internal state that keeps score of subscribers. So it'll say subscribers, and it's a new set of functions that you know aren't are just return nothing, right? Um, and what we'll do is when you subscribe, we expect a callback of type, okay, well, thanks, copilot, but it, it, it's something that gets the current state and returns nothing, okay? And what we'll do is we'll just add it to our set. Sure, we can say this gets the state. Um, so we just add it to our set and we return a function to unsubscribe, that is to delete it from the list of subscribers. Now, when we dispatch, we just need to notify each subscriber. So subscribers are for each, um, you know, call it on state. That's it. Um, so now we can test this by, um, using a mock function actually so what we'll do is after we create the store we will say const mock fn is is it jest.fn no it's not right it's it's the test should have some mock function mock fn fn mock. whatever uh, we can just make our own so we'll say uh, const noop is a function that does nothing. And what we'll do is we'll say um, store.subscribe, noop. Now what we'll do is um, after maybe the first dispatch, we'll expect noop to have been called times one. And uh, let's run the tests. Oh, it failed. Function noop is not a spy or call to a spy. Okay, I guess that's the language instead of mock, it's spy. Um, I, okay, at this point, I must confess, I don't know how to do spies in the test. So let's just um, find out the test spy. So what are we doing? Um, expect it to V. So we probably want to see something that has been called. Uh, oh, functions. Here we go. Okay. Restore all mocks. Um, expect spy dot get no mock name. Now what is spy? const spy is v.spyon, okay. Um, we're spying on messages and then the get latest. Okay, that's fine, we can do that. So um, v, wow, I would never have guessed. Um, const noop is, so we'll say v.spyon um, noop. What, is it supposed to be an object? Okay, object method name. Um, so we'll just do something like uh, sub noop sub okay uh, noop dot sub and then where do we we expect noop dot sub to have been called times one is he okay then our test passes so it does call it one time but at the end how many times has it been called it has been called where is it uh, expected to be called one times and it doesn't tell us how many times it's been called but we can do the math so here it's been called one time um two three so three times total 
Do we save it? Awesome. Perfect. Look at that. Great. It's working. So we've implemented a bare bones Redux with get state, dispatch, and subscribe. Now, what I think makes sense is let's look at how it would work in a proper user interface application. Let's bind it to some elements and see how it goes. Um, but before we do that, everything's implemented in one file. Like the implementation is in the test. That's probably not the way we want to do it. So we'll, we'll split this across modules first and then attach it to a UI and go from there. Okay. So to do that, what we're going to do is um, we have our create store function. We're just going to put this in its own file. So we'll just do this and we'll create a new file called Redux ts boom and what we're going to do is export that we are going to import that here so let's go to create store um, this looks pretty good that's it we have our module tester still passing good so now let's make a new file called index.html and index.ts and this will be our playground so we'll do html5 um, the body let's give it some padding just to not have my face occupy the top part padding top um, 200 pixels and what we'll do is we'll just have an input. So input, I don't know, type is range, maybe. Um, sure, um, this looks good. And then we'll also show the amount that the range is. And we want to bind these two together. And we want both of them to be bound to the store. Lastly, we'll add a script tag. Source is index.ts. Type is module. And we're going to use Vite. Vite will tie all this together. This looks great, OK? Um, let's kill the tests and start npx Vite. This should start a dev server for us. Perfect. Um, and now let's get started with the TypeScript implementation. So what do we need? We're just going to copy a lot of the test stuff um, because we're just creating another counter. This should be more than enough. So let's go here and paste everything. Create store needs to be imported, but we should have something we can use. OK, so we have a store. We need to now bind the store to the user interface. Um, and there's a couple ways we can do it. We can listen for change events on the input and then update the store to respond to the input's slide, sliding events. Or we can have the store be the source of truth and update the inputs in response to the store's events. Uh, depends how we want to do it. Um, depends who wants to be in control. Let's explore both of them, um, starting with responding to change events on the input and then updating the store, and then um, vice versa. So to do that, what I want to do is um, const with, um, the initial state, by the way, should be 50, just because our input's 50. Okay, so now what we can do is say my range, because if we go to index.html, um, I believe the input element has an ID my range. Now this becomes a global variable. So say my range dot add event listener on input. What I want to do is exactly. Um, I want to we get the get the event. We say event dot target dot value, and we can dispatch a function. Uh, we can rather just increment by the value. We don't want to do that, right? We want to have maybe another uh, function called set or another action rather called set a payload to number. We can implement that here. Uh, perfect. And now we'll just do this. So we dispatch of type set with the new value. Um, this should update the, the store every single time. Uh, but we just don't know that the store is updating because there is no like console log store. So let's fix that. So we'll open this. And we'll add to our store a subscriber. Store dot subscribe um, new state, and we'll say console dot log um, state changed to new state. Okay, so we have a subscriber, and now we're dispatching every time this changes. So we should have there we go <laughs> object object. Um, it's new state dot count, and it's even type safe. Fantastic. So now we bound our slider to our Redux store. That's awesome. So now when the slider changes, we update the store. Um, can we do it the other way, such that when we dispatch an action, the slider changes? Uh, or rather when we, yeah, exactly. When we dispatch an action, the slider changes. Sure, let's try it. So um, the slider, let's say, is not able to change by default. So we, we don't listen for input events. That's the start. So now this value shouldn't change. In fact, it doesn't. Um, OK, in fact, wait, wait a second. Um, Look at this. So the value isn't changing as well. So what we can do is when the store changes, just the value changes here. Um, that's probably good. So we're this makes the input the entire source of truth. It the input updates the store. The store updates the DOM. Um, why? Science. But let's let's go. So um, what we can do is not only console log. We'll add another subscriber such that when it changes, we take the new state and then update the count. The count element has an ID demo. So what we're going to do is 
demo dot no demo dot inner text is new state dot com dot two string sure why not save so now what's happening ooh, look at that is the source of truth is a change event to the range that is dispatching to the store and the store is updating this thing um but let's just as a final experiment say what if we don't even want to respond to mouse events but only when the store changes everything changes let's explore that so first first order of business is to not do this right boom um and we can in the same subscriber maybe instead of up, instead of just updating uh, inner text we can update my range so we'll say my range dot value is also this um but now there's the question how do we actually update this is unbound by the way so how do we update the store well we just window dot dispatch equals store dot dispatch and now we should have it here dispatch type set payload 20 payload payload 20 right boom and everything changed look at that all our subscribers work so who has the control that's going to be a decision for you and your team but we kind of looked at also binding a redux store to, to a ui and this is in fact how react redux works for example through context um i hope this has been helpful we covered a good amount of ground i'd say we looked at a, a, a bare bones implementation of redux from scratch we created get state we created dispatch we created subscribers and then we bound all that to the dom and we did it all in a test driven development way um, if you're enjoying this content if you're learning from it i would ask that you subscribe and maybe share it with your friends or on social media for discussion that's a great way to support me as a creator um, as i make more of these as well let us know in the comments what you want to see next or what you're interested in and i'd be happy to make that content for you um, it is an absolute honor and privilege to be able to serve you this way and i'm thankful for it until next time I'll catch you in the next one peace